This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the ASUS ZenBook Pro Duo UX581 15.6 inch laptop. I have not been this excited about a laptop in a long time, and largely because this thing has not one 4K screen, it actually has two screens, and a lot of other interesting things, which can make you worried. You might have questions. Most of the answers are pretty positive. We're going to look at it now. So this is a creative person's dream. And also, if you like to game, it, it really helps too. You know, there are other mobile workstations or consumer-oriented mobile workstations like the Dell XPS 15. They use the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Extreme, the HP Spectre X360 15-inch higher-end model, the GemCut one. Uh, that's a little more consumer-facing still. And even something like the Razer Blade 15 Advanced, which crosses over into what creatives need. And other than the razor blade, you're usually looking at kind of weak sauce, watered down graphics, just a little bit. NVIDIA GTX 1650 graphics in there, maybe only limited to a Core i7 CPU. Well, with this one, you can get a Core i7 9th gen or a Core i9 overclockable inside. And forget that GTX 1650 stuff. <laughs> now, we have an RTX 2060 inside, so it's got game besides, even though it's not really intended for gaming first, because ASUS makes the Zephyrus line, the Strix line, they got plenty of gaming laptops. It's one of the things they're best known for. So this one is more for the creative types. It's for the videographers out there, for the photographers, for architects, for 3D people, and also for designers. You get the idea there. So it has some of those creature comforts that you're not going to find all together with those kind of specs normally. You get a pen, and the pen works not just with the wonderful 4K OLED display, main display, but also with the screen pad plus display. So either place you want to write, it works. Both of them have touch screens. Very nice there. The Dell X XPS 15, for some reason, with their 4K OLED, they decided not to go touch, probably for weight and thickness of the device. And you've got a kind of adult look, shall we say. So that's often the harder part to, to, to get. If you're looking at something that has like an RTX 2060 inside, that level of graphics is typically a gaming laptop. And then you've got boy racer looks. So it sounds awesome so far, doesn't it? Hey, just go out and buy one. Well, they are expensive, though the pricing is in line with the competition. $2,500 gets you the Core i7 9750H CPU a 512 gig NVMe SSD, fast SSD in there, 16 gigs of RAM. No matter which of these you choose, you're going to get the same display options. So that part's the same. If you want the Core i9 with 32 gigs of RAM, a one terabyte NVMe SSDs, ours is a Samsung PM981, it's the fastest you can get. Well, that one is going to set you back $29.99, call it $3,000. Our review owner came from Computer Upgrade King, Cuck USA. They've been supplying a lot of our gaming laptop review units, but they also carry this. Sounding too good to be true? Well, there are a few caveats. Just like the ASUS Rogue Zephyrus and others who have copied that design, we have that forward shifted keyboard. So the keyboard is at the front edge. Some of you may find that not very comfortable. Uh, it's more awkward on your lap. It's less awkward on the table. Plus, they give you a funny little plastic wrist rest. Not that you're going to be carrying that everywhere you go, but yeah, that's a little bit of a drawback. This has a little LED light strip at the front, and that is for Alexa, so you can know if Alexa has heard you when you speak to her. Oddly, though, the Alexa app isn't preloaded. You have to go to Windows Store to install that if you wish to have a chat with Alexa. And by the way, the included wrist rest has a little light tunnel and a prism so that you can see that even if the wrist rest is positioned in front of the laptop. In terms of feel, it's better than the Zephyrus. It's crisper. It feels nicer to type on, easier to type on. 1.4 millimeters of key travel, so that's pretty decent. And the other gotcha is that right-mounted trackpad. Not only gotcha for me, because I'm left-handed, but it's it might, Microsoft Precision, that part's good, but it's a kind of up-and-down sort of trackpad, so you don't have a whole lot of width to work with there. If I was right-handed, I think I probably wouldn't mind it so much, but, well, I'm not right-handed. Thank God, like I said, there's the pen and there's the touchscreen instead for that. One thing they didn't copy from the Zephyrus, and I'm so happy, is that odd drop-down bottom. You know that metal plate that drops down on the Zephyrus to give it a little more opening for the cooling on the bottom? That just always seemed a little annoying, a little flimsy, like it's going to catch all the dust bunnies. So here, instead, they're using a more traditional design where the back of the lid actually sticks out a little bit, so it's going to raise the device off the table for a little more airflow when you put it on the table. I will take that. Though when it's on your lap, you know, you, you'll feel that edge digging in a little bit on your legs. Port selection on this is pretty good, well, com especially compared to something like a 15-inch MacBook Pro or ASUS's own 
Pro Art even higher end mobile workstation that only has Thunderbolt 3 ports like the Mac. This one has two USB A 3.1 Gen 2 ports. It has a USB C slash Thunderbolt 3 full 40 gig gigabit per second port on board. Of course, an audio jack 3.5 millimeter and an HDMI 2.0 port. So for most people on the road, you got a lot of things covered. No Ethernet and again, no SD card slot. All right, you want to know about the displays, don't you? I mean, that's the biggest of the parlor tricks here. There's a minor parlor trick, but ASUS has done this before, and that is that the trackpad can turn into a number of pads. Just hit a little button there, and boom, it does it. In fact, it can actually integrate with the calculator app, so you can turn it into a calculator, which is kind of handy, I have to admit. But the main display, it's the same Samsung 15.6-inch OLED display we've seen on several different 2019 laptops. That's because it's the only 15.6 inch OLED panel that's available. It is up to the manufacturers to do things like calibrate it well, for example, though. And that's something ASUS has done a very good job of here. It says Pantone certified, for whatever that means. Pantone is in the color calibration business. And the calibration of the box was pretty darn good. OLED displays look awfully cartoonish and garish, like an old Samsung Galaxy S4 phone or something like that did. But no, this one looks very good. So big points them for that is certainly shock and awe when you turn it on. Also, it's a glossy screen, which most touch screens are, but the reflectance is very well handled, I have to say. Say compared to the HP Spectre X360 line, where HP loves to use highly ref reflective glass, I wish they didn't. This one doesn't have as much problem with glare and reflections. It's also a little better than the XPS 15 when it comes to that. It's not a matte display though, but that's what the Screen Pad Plus is, which ASUS also calls a 4K display, but really technically it's not. Yes, across horizontally, it is the same 3840 pixel width as a 4K display is, but the height is 1100 pixels, not 2160 pixels. That one has is matte and it's IPS, and some people have complained that it's matte. Well, yes, it's true that some of the marketing materials make it look like one continuous, beautiful, glossy thing if you have a window that spans across both of those displays, and that isn't what you see, but it's matte for two reasons. Number one, the glare would be really obnoxious on something that was laying flat on the table, so it takes care of that problem. Number two, if you're using the pen on the bottom display, the screen pad plus well it's it gives a little more bite a little bit more resistance so it feels a little bit more like paper the good news is that that secondary display is handled like a second monitor which is the way it should be done for compatibility's sake because every application in windows handles two monitors on the system absolutely fine there's no weird gimmicky software or anything like that i would assume that it's connected via a display port cable internally because it does that thing that windows 10 machines sometimes do which is when you put it to sleep you hear that oh, hardware unplug sound and that's the display and that happens a lot with display port connected external monitors and windows and that is a little bit annoying because when you resume it might throw all your windows up to the top display and then it might shift them back down it might not there are a couple of buttons above the trackpad some hardware buttons one can turn the screen pad plus off which sometimes is something you want to do say i'm watching netflix or something i find it a little distracting to have something illuminated and displaying things on the bottom so i might want to turn it off in terms of power consumption, that secondary screen pad plus display doesn't seem to use a lot of power. Maybe 15, 20 minutes from total run times. That's not a lot. Anyway, it's a secondary monitor. So you can put your web browser up top and then your Slack in the bottom screen or your one one note note taking application in the bottom screen take notes while you're looking at the web or a PowerPoint presentation or whatever it is you're doing. If you're playing a game, obviously you could have the game running in your main 4K OLED display and you could have little cheats and walkthroughs going on the bottom display. And then there's a switcher button which will switch the windows from between the top and the bottom screen. Top one goes to the bottom, bottom one goes to the top. And you tell me if you think that's useful. So is it worth it? Obviously it's going to add weight, it's going to add cost to this machine. I think it is because for me personally, when I'm at my desk, I use a laptop set up with a secondary 4K external monitor. Two monitors are the way I like to work. And one of the things I hate most when I'm on the go is the fact that I have to make do with one. Windows are blocking windows, you know the whole thing here. So it gives me a compromised or smaller version of at least a two monitor setup and it's really invaluable. So something has to be wrong, right? How about cooling? I mean, this is a pretty thin and pretty light laptop, though not super thin and light, especially compared to the competition, which hovers around four and a half pounds. This one is 5.5 pounds, which is 2.5 kilograms, and it's about 24 millimeters thick. 
or thin, depending on your opinion of that. So it's not as super duper crazy skinny, and that's a good thing. They have two cooling fans on this, as you'd expect, for the CPU and the GPU, and they exhaust out the sides. So that means your mouse hand will get warmed up. Me, as a lefty, gets more warming because the CPU fan is the one that's on the left side. CPU fans are often the ones that run much more continuously, even at very low RPMs, but they do. Right-handed people will only feel the heat when you're using the dedicated GPU. But it takes air in from the keyboard area, the top three rows, and it also sucks it in from the big vent area that is behind the keyboard area facing against the display. Yes, there's enough of opening in there to take air in. It's thick enough and it has well enough designed cooling and some pretty decent heat pipes and stuff that it's pretty effective. It surprised me actually, especially when the, the Asus Rogue Zephyrus line, which shares a similar design, that area above the keyboard where the screen pad plus is on this Zenbook, it gets burning, burning hot. And obviously that you can't do that. You don't want to fry your display here. And there is no heat to be felt there. It's really impressive. And the bottom doesn't get hot. The top area nowhere exceeds human body temperature. Even when doing something like 4K video renders and stuff like that. And even playing some games like Civ 6, for example, which is a perfect use for it. 8-core Core i9 CPU. Let me tell you, you do not have to wait for those turns very long. Now, we have the Core i9 model, which is the worst case for heat. And, of course, the RTX 2060 is standard on this. And the core temperatures on this are actually pretty good when using it for pro apps work. No problems there. I played Shadow of the Tomb Raider on this on high settings at full HD resolution, non 4K resolution. Not only were the frame rates great, but the temperatures were from 89 core temperature to about 92 typically. Again, a little throttle stop, a little undervolting, and you should be able to drop that four or five degrees. Given the fact that gaming laptops get that hot already, and certainly a MacBook Pro 15 inch will get that hot. That's pretty good stuff. So what about fan noise? And it must be bad, yes? No, you know, I think they have the, tu the fans tuned, these 12 volts, 71 blade fans, pretty quiet. You really, even when playing games, don't hear it that loud at all. It's quieter than certainly most gaming laptops on the market. And there's a little turbo fan button, which will increase your fan RPMs by about 10%, only as needed, which is brilliant. It's not one of those things where you hit the max fans button and it sounds like a jet engine taking off. But I'm obviously they're tuning this towards being quiet. You get your work done. You don't derange other people. This is not a gaming laptop where you're going to have full out, full bore fans. The laptop has stereo speakers. They're pretty loud. They're okay. They're not phenomenal when it comes to bass, however, but I guess they're about average for the class of laptop. So how about battery life? It has a 71 watt hour battery, which is reasonable, but not class leading. We're not talking like Dell going with a 99 watt hour battery here. They also offer a 62 watt hour battery that has 50% charge in 15 minutes, they claim. And it sounds impossible to me. I don't know. We have the 71 watt hour battery. This has an OLED display. Typically, battery life is not so good with OLED displays. Also, with OLED displays, it really depends on what you're displaying and what your theme is set to, your Windows theme and your desktop background. So going with the predominantly black wallpaper that Asus preloads on this and the Windows blackout theme, we managed about five and a half hours at 150 nits of brightness for the main display, just doing light productivity work, streaming some video, that sort of thing. If you're going to be pushing it harder, if you're going to be doing something like Adobe Photoshop, then expect more like four hours. If you're doing Premiere Pro, then expect probably three, three and a half hours, because that really hits your battery pretty hard. It comes with a 230 watt charger, which is another heavy carry here when you're thinking about potentially lighter laptops that you might be getting instead. It weighs about one and a half pounds or so. So it's 230 watts. It's the same one that they use for some of the Asus Rogue Zephyrus models, in fact. So on the bottom here, you can see our little, I guess it's faux leather over here and mostly grip and a little ventilation. There's some ventilation going on over here. To take it off, guess what? It's actually pretty easy, like you'd expect from a so-called pro laptop. Torx T5 screws, they are all visible except for here and here, where there are little matching blue rubber plugs. Use tweezers to pull those out. They're pretty durable. You probably won't destroy them to get to the last two screws. And then basically it just pops right off. There's not a whole lot of annoying plastic clip action. This is unusually heavy, this metal bottom cover here. I don't know if that's for isolating the heat inside or whatever the reason is, but this is what it looks like on the other side. And here are internals. So we've got our two fans going on here. 
with our copper heat pipes painted black. So we've got some shared heat pipes. We've got some independent heat pipes, a pretty decent amount of cooling. Again, side exhaust, pretty obvious that that's going on over here. And our heat sink for our CPU and our GPU. I'm not too thrilled with seeing two screws, and that probably explains why the core temperatures sometimes are as much as five degrees apart centigrade. But Overall, it actually does the job pretty well. This is our M.2 SSD slot right over here. And this is the battery, obviously. And under this cover right over here, here is our Wi-Fi 6 card, Intel AX200 card. It's the latest, greatest from Intel. That's pretty nice. So what about RAM, you say? Uh-huh, I know. So my guess is it's on the other side of the motherboard, which is a bummer, which is, well, happy days. This one has 32 gigs, so that's going to be enough for years to come. Uh, Rasu says it's not soldered on board, so the only other place it would the sockets could possibly be is on the other side of this motherboard. So that's the ASUS ZenBook Pro Duo UX581. And I'm not much of a fangirl. If you watch our channel, you know I don't particularly fall in love with products or favor a particular platform. But I have to say, I'm pretty close to being in love with this. For the price, it's not cheap. But given the fact that the competition is priced similarly, what you get in here is pretty darn impressive. This is one of the most powerful mobile workstations. That RTX 20... 60 in there means you could actually game with it, even if that's not its primary purpose in life. The 4K OLED display, one of the nicest implementations of the single Samsung display that's available for 2019. The secondary screen pad plus display, I actually love it because when I'm at my desk, like I said, I use dual monitors. This is about the closest thing you can get on the go. And then you got the Core i9 or Core i7, depending on what you want to spend. You get the idea. It's so well equipped. All of it works out pretty well. You got the weirdo keyboard location. You have to decide if you're okay with that. And if you're left-handed like me, that right-handed trackpad, Thank God there's a pen and a touch screen. Let's put it that way. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and hit that notification bell afterwards so you're notified when we put out a new video.